SAR, especially when you have tuple, um, and has to be good, relatively uh, easy way. Let's, let's go into that. So, so SAR uh, provides an open source search platform. Uh, it's an Apache project. It's uh, great for full text searching. It does a lot of neat stuff. Highlights hits. You get to pass the search uh, a lot more. It's um, a real search compared to people's internal search. They find anything. Um, you'll see it when you compare it. It's just that much better. Um, and it integrates into Drupal in many ways. And we're focusing on this session on the search functionality, but you can use it as a backend to your use uh, with Search API, which is a really popular way of using it too, but we're focusing on full text searching now. So, um, um, since SOAR is Java based, it needs a Java capable web server, a sheet one. Uh, comes with Jetty. It's easy to, it's basically you download it and then you uh, start it. It's going to run. There's an example of solar installation within the package that you get. It's very easy to install. Um, and um, when, when, you, when you come to Drupal, when you have it running on some server that you can act, actually access on that particular <coughs> port that it runs, um, then Apache Solar Search Integration Module is uh, the module you want to use for searching with SOAR. So it's this module, and as they humbly, humbly say here, if you're looking for Apache SOAR integration, this is possibly the best option. Trust the guy in the yeah. Um, so, um, how Drupal integrates the SOAR is, um, is, is pretty simple. It, um, the, the module replaces, or you can turn off the Drupal's internal search indexing and instead uses, use the SOAR for indexing your stuff. Uh, SOAR runs, it's basically, it has its own kind of uh, fielded, um, let's say, collection um, that's defined in, in, a, in a schema that If you need more, by the way, in SOAR, they are called cores. <coughs> if, if you have a multi-core SOAR, that means that you have multiple schema XMLs defining multiple different collections. But they, you only have one per core, so that's, that's how it goes with SOAR. It has an example of a multi-core installation as well in the, in the package it ships with. Now, um, the um, Module, the Apache SOAR integration module ships with a schema.xml, so you get a ready made schema that's suitable for, for using with Drupal. So it defines the mandatory node fields and um, it uses SOAR as a cool dynamic field definitions. Um, SOAR is more like a um, NoSQL, if you think, think of it as a database, because you can um, have dynamic fields. Now, because you have to define what SOAR is, is supposed to be doing to the fields, you have to have a certain way of naming them. So, in that schema.xml that comes with, with the module, there's a, there's a way, a uh, kind of naming method, how, do you, how, do you, how you have to name the, your fields in SOAR, so that SOAR does the right things to them. Um, it's um, self-explanatory if you read the schema that makes it out. It says there what kind of fields you're, you're trying to save there. And it can save, in a, in a NoSQL way, multiple data items per field. So they can be multi-value fields. Um, you'll have to code, by the way, add some rows to your custom modules to get all the field, field API fields there properly. And if you want to do that, really high-end way. It's, it, it's well documented and pretty straightforward. Now, now going to what, what actually SOAR does, it does its magic and then you can search from it. But when you, when you, 
use multiple different languages, you'll have to now understand what it does. Now, first, it looks at the type of the field because it uses different um, methods of indexing different fields, field types. Now, text field types uh, type is the most interesting app to to us. It has different uh, ways of copying different fields into different. Uh, fields in SOAR and, and stuff like that, that it does for, for instance, ordering and, and such. But, but the most important thing is how it indexes your text so that you can full text search from that. Um, the behavior differs in different languages, or it should. Definitely doesn't if you use English for schema and, and index some other language there. But, um, for English, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, it's, it, first it tokenizes text by white space and removes the stop words, words not to index, it's not the extra words and or then it. Then it splits the words by case change. For instance, it has different rules that you can use to split the words. Um, then it stems the words, producing big inflected words to their base form, um, meaning that it removes the end of the word so that it's more easy to find. And then it removes duplicate tokens. This is the usual case. We look at an example text. There's a an example text that you'd be processing. Um, we separate it by white space, pretty simple, right? Nothing fancy here. We remove the stop words, so now we only have words that mean something to us, that actually are meaningful. Um, then we split, split the words, or uh, well we, we're supposed to split, but then we wouldn't split the free air, which is represents some kind of a brand name here. So it's on the protected word list. We come to that later. And then we put everything in lowercase. Just we don't want case sensitive searching for regular users. They don't get it. And it doesn't make any sense usually. And then we stem it. And this is the stuff that goes into the SOAR index. Now Obviously, for the, for the query that the user writes to the search box, we do the same so that we can actually match, match them properly. Um, now, when we have this um, stemmed uh, and well-indexed stuff in, in our um, SOAR, um, then we can match it better for different search words. Now, this doesn't happen with, with for instance, like searching from the from, from MySQL database. It doesn't, you, don't, you can't find anything sensible with that because it has to be within, the whole word has to be within the text or something like that. And it rarely is, and might still be very relevant for the user. Um, Solar ranks, the results per relevance. You can use any other mean of, uh, of sorting the results, but relevance is very good because it, it um, has its internal system of ranking the results um, and it scores them for relevance and then you can boost different fields, as you probably know, in, in uh, Drupal's configuration, so you can boost the title, for instance. So if you search for a uh, Samsung Galaxy S3, you wouldn't want to find a leather cover for that first. You'd like to find the actual phone. So that, that way you can search, you can boost the images <coughs> on titles and stuff like that. Um, all the special configurations that you need for a basic solar installation they get shipped with uh, Apache SOAR search integration module. So you'll just copy them into SOAR and then you're good to go. 
you'll probably have to look at the uh, protected word list, though, but nothing fancy. It's, it's pretty straightforward and easy. And this is what usually uh, people do when they install SOAR. Now, what happens when, when um, we do this with foreign languages, nothing, nothing good will fall. And another thing is that when you're using Search API, as a, as a SOAR backend, it, it has It has a totally different way of storing stuff into SOAR than, than, the, than the Apache SOAR search integration module. Now, search API doesn't do it in a way that's, that, that it would be very effectively searched by full text search. It has that feature, but it, that, that's not something that it's clearly aimed for. I haven't been looking at it lately, so it might, might have evolved, but I know that, that for instance, multi-language on that is, is, is pretty hard and tricky business. So, your SOAR search is now installed, running, indexed, works well with my English content, but even though we're in London right now, this is still Europe, we have a lot <laughs> of languages here. And um, then the things get a bit more complicated. Even though it's not limited to Europe, we also have other languages that come well available to us. Even on the US sites, you regularly have to have a Spanish version of the site available. If, if they really want their customers to serve well. So. So the source schema file has to be the language of where. Now, stemming, stop words, compound words, all that is language dependent. Now, this schema that XML, which is the main configuration, we're not going to then go into, into the other, other, other configuration files not related to that, but um, that needs to be language specific. Mm. And, um, <laughs> It's uh, in a truly Java way, I think. It's, it's a long, complicated XML document that any errors will just throw your stack trace on the screen. And if you're a Java developer, feel free to throw some errors. So here's an example. So here's an example. That looks fun. Just create one of those and then you're. <laughs> <laughs> no, <clears throat> we would like to get some help now. We have a big community. Obviously, we have someone who doesn't want to write that by hand. So there's the Sora multilingual module now. Um, this is done by, by a guy in Switzerland. He's not here. And um, he had a session about this in 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 uh, DrupalCon Munich. Um, and, and there's limited resources on this project, so I must warn you that when you use this module, it sometimes really doesn't work because there's a there's a there's a chain of open source projects in kind of in front of that. So there's the Apache SOAR uh, project, which goes in a, in a huge pace and it changes version numbers like any Java project would, so it jumps from 1.5 to 3.0 <coughs> and so on. Now going at 3.7, I think, something like that. Um, and then the Apache Solar integration module tries to keep up with that. So they try to keep up with Solar space. Now it's being maintained by Acquia, so they have the means to keep up pretty well. Now then there's the one guy in Switzerland trying to keep up with that, and that doesn't always go too well. No. So, um, if it doesn't work, just take uh, take the dev version. It probably works better with the latest stuff from the other other modules. So, release versions might need an older version of not only Apache Solar integration module, but also that might need an older version of Solar itself. But what what this module does is a lot. Um, 
the same guy has created two modules. This this, this comes this goes under this module. So they're kind of a, just one module in two pieces. So Apache Sora multilingual will enable you to have a multi-language site and still use Sora Search optimized for each language. You really want to do that. And then the config generator will gener generate configuration base for such a language, such, such a site that has multiple language. Okay. Um, what um, Apache Solar Multilingual does is, is um, actually takes, when you index, when, it, when it's indexing a node, it, it, it takes the fields um, and checks the node's language and saves it in different fields on, on Solar. So that in Solar, in the same collection, there are multiple fields for one field in Drupal. So there are more fields per each language in Solar. In Google, you only have one because you have one much versions of, of the node. So um, this enables you to have different configurations for the for the different languages, even though they are same fields in Drupal. Um, and then you have the starting point with the Apache Solar config generator um, for your configuration files. There are a lot of languages in the world. Obviously, they, with the limited resources, they can't help you with all the languages. So it ships with the stop word list for most common languages now. As I said earlier, the stop words are the words you don't want to index. And, and that comes from the solar project itself. They have lists available. They have a lot of dead links too, but, but they have lists. Um, then there are the Protected words, ESO mappings, synonyms, and compound words, uh, and then, then you might need something totally different, like different stemmers. Um, not all languages work well with uh, Snowball filter factor, which is the default stemmer that the Solar Multilingual works with. <coughs> Let's go with these um, things too that you need still. So you need the stop words. Uh, most of them are shipped um, with uh, Apache Solar Multilingual, or you can find them online. There are <coughs> it's pretty easy to define what words in, in a language are stop words. The, the things that, that just are prepositions and all these other words that don't mean anything into the content, but they just are part of the grammar. Um, the lists are easy to find, and you can find them easily for many languages. Um, then there's the ESO mapping. This is for certain languages have different kind of kinds of. <coughs> this is probably the best example how to explain what ESO mapping does. So if you have a, if the user searches for cafe. She might not use the right uh, accent marks or something like that, which is which which are which is a kind of language specific thing, and they do they are language specific because this 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 might in some languages this only means how it's pronounced, but then in some some languages it might mean it might mean something totally different. For instance, the umlauts um, that we do a lot here in Europe as well. They usually and regularly change the meaning. For instance, in German, you really don't want to mix them so that you just remove the dots on, on the A's. It, it doesn't mean the same thing. But you, you have different ways of converting them still, even in German. Germans do it a lot, by the way. They switch them to AUs and, and A or A, like o, OUs and stuff. But for instance, in, in Scandinavia, we don't do that. At all, we use those and those stay. Uh, that's why international sports look <coughs> funny to us sometimes because they do that for our skiers and stuff. Then there's the uh, 
protected words list. Now, this is um, this is the this is the list of words you don't you don't want the indexer to kind of <coughs> do anything about trademarks, product names, names and such. Obviously, these are sites, not only language specific. <coughs> so, well, they might not be language specific. If you do, if you do, let's say, 65 uh, language versions on a single customer, they might actually use the same protected word lists for every language. Because even in CJK languages like Chinese, Japanese, Korean, you might still see the trademark <coughs> in its original form. You don't want to want the, you don't want the CJK uh, tokenizer to do anything about that because they, they do things differently. Yeah. Um, then there are the synonyms. Sometimes I need someone just this uh, plenty a big list of words. Um, that means the same thing and for instance like online shopping you would really want the customer to find stuff even though they might not, not know the correct name or, or the thing that, that and you don't want to tag stuff so that it's visible to all the different synonyms but you, you can use it in the search so that it actually is invisible that even though I wrote wireless um, bridge I found a router because I don't know what the difference is between a bridge and a router it's, it's fine, you can do, it. do that too then there are compound words. This might not say much to the English-speaking world, but there's a there's a big issue with this in some some languages. As I said earlier, I'm from Finland, so I know all about this stuff. Um, most languages you don't even need it. A compound word is word of two original words, like football, as a foot and a ball. Um, but let's look at an example. We did a Drupal site, a recipe site. It's actually a magazine site with live recipes. Recipes is a really big thing online, I don't know why. We've done many sites already that have recipes. And they're always this most searched thing. They're awful CO uh, typing and stuff. Anyway, um, in English, you search for soup you get all the soups because they have to wear soup in, in that. Now, in Finnish, these are the same soups, by the way. That you see a problem there. Now, this means soup in Finnish, keitto. It's there in the end, but they are all compound words because we do a lot of compound words in Finnish. Now, if you have a list of words, that 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 um, are base base form words that means that cut this to index that it, that and the list has the word soup, then we'll cut them and index them separately and it'll match. Um, and the reason why why you can't find it within the other word it, it, it's because SOAR doesn't do infix indexes. And if you have used uh, Sphinx, have you anyone used Sphinx? So maybe excellent for my SQL service? No, no, it's a it's a Russian thing. One guy in Russian writes. It's a really good searching thing. Anyway, let's don't do that. It's 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 good, but it has its limitations. A lot of great things things come from Russia by some random developers. Like engineers don't don't I don't mean to be rude in any way, but, but solar is just better. Um, it does, uh, Sphinx does index indexes, but Solar doesn't, so it doesn't index it a word by like here, 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 here. Sphinx does so that you have configuration that you say that let's go three, four letters in or five letters in and then it indexes all the variations like that. It's a some job and you, you don't want to do that. Now you can do that with Solar, I've heard, never, never tried it myself. You have to have two indexes and then Turn the other way around. <coughs> Try it and tell me how, how well you did. Um, then we have some special languages. My favorite is Japanese because we've been working for two months now to get this Japanese SOAR working. 
Now it's working. We don't want to touch that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Chinese, Japanese, and Korean have their uh, own different approach because um, you don't have to stem the words. The words are in some kind of stem form. Don't, I'm not a linguistic expert. I, I, I'm just an IT guy, so and I don't know any of these languages either. So the problem with uh, CJK languages is that um, you have to cut them out of the sentences because the sentences are, it's a really long list of those words, and, and you have to be able to do that with a tokenizer. Now in Europe we use white, white space tokenizer because it's easy. We cut words by white space. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> so there's a CJK uh, tokenizer in SOAR and it has an example configuration, for instance, Japanese. So um, if you have to do that, um, you can probably do it pretty well on uh, Jap Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. If you use some basic stuff from China, China from Chinese, yeah, I think. Two variations that actually can be indexed properly in solar. I think there are probably tens of variations of the language itself. So uh, if they, if your customer can agree by doing it just one way, or so it's fine. And the Japanese and Korean should work. Now I've heard that there are a lot of Asian languages that don't work at all. You don't have any help. Uh, and we still have one customer who's willing to set up a site for their Mongolian market. A bit eager and enthusiastic about installing <laughs> SOAR for Mongolian. <laughs> Anyone with any word lists here? No? <laughs> Email goes to me. Um, after you added those word lists and did basically have done the basic configuration with them, Solar multilingual, you should be having a working multilingual solar search. Now, let the natives try it and search with it, and they'll have they'll say that I searched with this, I'm supposed to find this, and I didn't. And then you know that okay, you must do some tuning somewhere and check out online if someone has good tips for certain language. And you want to do that because people tend to think that only sensible way of searching a site is true Google. Because Google, Google does that per language. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. A uh, working multilingual SOAR is, 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 is a possibility and, and it's actually something that you can achieve. Now, when you have that, then everybody will think your site is a benchmark. I've heard that already. It's, 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 it's really um, great to hear that someone says that, well, we'd like to have it working as well as that side. Okay, we did that. So you should be able to do that for your side as well. So that's a, that's a great place to be. Now, most of the solar installations online don't do multilingual well, so you can really differentiate yourself from the other vendors if you just do this. And this is not a huge job to do, I mean, honestly. You get a couple of days of work and you get it running. So, a quick recap. I have a lot of slides. Apache Solar Integration. Module for integrating, integrating your search, SOAR, to Drupal. Works well for English, even better if you do the SOAR incorporation a bit. Apache Solar and Multilingual and Config Generator enable you to have the base for your own indexing. And if you're using search API, you're in for a lot of manual labor. Uh, I would show multilingual gives you a starting point, but you need to tune your settings, you need to get the word lists, and search online for available word lists and, and such, and then come up with some productive words. And uh, that's it.